Good morning. I'm grateful to God for being here. God has been so good to me, and I know he's been good to you as well. Let's get right to it, shall we? Our scripture today will come from the book of Matthew, chapter number 6, verses 25 through 26, and verses 33 through 34. I will read from the New International Version for clarity. And it reads, Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothes? Look to the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or stow away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? So do not worry, saying what we shall eat, or what we shall drink, or what we shall wear. For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough worry and trouble of his own. My message from you today will be, don't even think about it. Now, we all tend to worry. We wake up in the morning, we worry about what we're going to wear. Our parents, we worry about our jobs. We worry about our young kids. We worry about how we're raising them. We worry about our older kids. If we prepared them for this life, for this cruel world that we're sending them out into, with gun violence, drugs, and shootings going on each and every day, that concerns us. Our young people, they're also worried as well. They worry about school. They worry about their grades. They worry about their relationships. They worry about their selves. They have their own self-esteem issues. Some of the friends that they call friends are gossiping to them, gossiping about them, talking about them, telling them things so that they can look good. It is then when our young people learn that their enemies can be uh, real and their friends can be fake. Now, we all tend to worry. Sometimes we worry so much that when we wake up in the morning, we don't even get rest at night because we went to bed worrying so much about the things before. We worry about the pandemic. In this day and age, we worry about even getting close to each other for fear of transmission. We worry about our health. We worry about our fitness. One of the things that I'm finding out as I'm getting older is that things that tend to live upstairs want to move downstairs. We also worry about our finances, whether or not we'll be able to make ends meet. One of the things that we're finding out today also is that there seems to be more month than money. I'm here to tell you today, though, that God says some concern and some worry is okay. It helps you plan. It helps you prepare. It helps keep you focused. These are the worries and things that are you are in control of. Now, too much worry, too much excessive worry can cause fear and anxiety. It keeps you focused on you. It keeps you focused on whether or not you can make things work, Maybe whether or not you can build uh, your home and take care of your needs on your own, as if you can do it anyway. God says today, trust him. He will take care of you. He wants to take care of you. He wants to provide your needs. If only you allow him to. One of the things that worry does is it calls into question three things about your character that you need to correct. One, worry questions where your loyalty lies. It also frustrates your faith and it puts your priorities in the wrong place. Now, we talk about where your loyalty lies. One of the things that you have to understand, and Jesus even talks about, is that you cannot serve God and mammon. Now, when we talk about mammon here, we're talking about money. We're talking about you cannot live with a divided loyalty to serve God and try to serve money. That will not work. You put your faith, your trust, your hope, your provision in this money. You look to money as your God and not to the God of the money. These are the things that you need to correct. Now, when it talks about how it frustrates your faith, Jesus says to us that God values us more than he does the birds of the air and the lilies of the field. Now, they're not shirking their responsibility and not taking care of themselves, not going out and looking for provision. But what he is saying is that he will make sure that it's there for them, that he's providing for them. Worry tends to provide a resistance to the growth of your faith. What does that mean? Well, when you exercise, when you exercise a muscle, you strengthen that muscle. Now, if you're not strengthening that muscle by th called faith, that's because you're not putting your trust in God. You're not allowing him to take care of your needs. You're not practicing that faith building, that faith building exercise. One of the testimonies that I often tend to bring up uh, is by our honorable Bishop Battle and how he was tested in that instance. He was providing for a church, had a bill come up due for his daughter, for his uh, tuition for his daughter. And he was faced with the challenge of how to pay, take care of this tuition when at the time he would, did not have the funds available. Now he could have done anything that he wanted in terms of trying to look within himself trying to look to himself to take care of it. But he knew that he was doing God's work. And he knew that God said, I will take care of you and I will provide for you. So he put that uh, worry into God's hands. 
And once you know it, days before the tuition was due, a friend called that had some past due debt that he knew nothing about. And it was almost to the exact amount that he needed for that uh, moment and for that instance. This is where we find out that God will make a way. He is taking care of us. Now, how does it improperly place your priority? God says he wants to be first in your life. He wants to take first place in your heart. He wants to be that treasure because he knows that where your treasure is, that's where your heart will be also. Understand, God will not take second place. He will not take second place to anyone or anything. He will just let you go about it and try to do it your way. Now remember, God knows what you need before you even need it. So why are you worrying about it? Don't even think about it. Let God know. Let you, let, you must know that God is on your side and that he will provide for you. There's also scripture in the book of Philippians that makes another point clear. I'm going to read to you from the book of Philippians, chapter number four, verses six through seven. This is also in the New International Version. It says, Do not be anxious for anything, but in every situation, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Now, we talk about guarding your hearts. Friends, I'm here to tell you, your past cannot be changed, and your future hasn't even happened anyway. God wants to place this wall around you. When he says, I'm going to guard your heart, guard your thoughts, that wall that he's placing behind you is keeping all the negative thoughts out. It's keeping all the chaos out. But at the same time, this wall is designed to build and keep things in. So it's keeping in that hope, that faith, and that trust. God is looking for a closer relationship with him from you. What the devil is trying to do, he's trying to throw up all types of redirection. He's trying to throw distractions. He's trying to make you an ineffective witness. How is he doing that? By distracting you with all the troubles and cares of the world. By bringing up these old situations, these friends that try to get you to do things that you used to do and try to bring you back into that fold so that you're not working and focusing on the words of God. How do you overcome this anxiety? How do you overcome this fear? How do you get away from all of this trouble and anxiety that's trying to come up on you? Well, the answer is seek God first. Pray. Pray and give God thanks. Pray and give God thanks in advance for what he's about to do for you, knowing that God will care for you. Prayer invites God into your issues. It provides, invites God into your relationships. It lets everybody know that you know that God is real. Be thankful for what God has done. One of the things that you have to remember is that no matter what happens, no matter what the situation looks like, God has already taken care of you. He's taking care of you right now. If you have a roof over your head, he's provided shelter. If you have clothes in your body, that's what? He's provided those clothes for you. If you're eating very well, which some of us are, then he's provided that food. If you're understanding even an inkling of what I'm saying to you, you are in your right mind. Be thankful because God has already provided for you. He's been good to you. He's been very good to you. One of the things I want you to understand, in conclusion, is that worry questions your loyalty. It frustrates your faith and puts your priorities in the wrong place. We need to stop carrying our burdens around, just like the Louis Vuitton luggage. Take your burdens to the Lord and leave them there. What God wants us to do is cast our cares upon him. When we do so, it allows us now to be more free to do the work of God. It allows us now to be a witness, to be a faithful servant unto God. Get rid of those problems, get rid of those issues, and let God have his way. So I admonish you, my friends, let God take care of you. Trust in God's love. Trust in his provision. God loves you. He cares for you. He wants to take care of you. So keep uh, looking and seeking to God. Seek God for his, for his help. Seek God for his love. Seek God for his provision. God help you. God keep you. May his grace shine upon you and give you grace. Amen.